Okay, so up until this point, we have taken a look at how to use the T account. Now we want to go further on. So remember, our approach <clears throat> is to start the first four steps of the accounting process or what we call accounting cycle. And that is uh, number one, we analyze the transactions. Number two, we record those transactions to the to the journal. And the third thing that we do is we post the transactions to the ledger. And the last thing we do is create uh, the unadjusted trial balance. So let's see if we can we can do that in this period of time. So we are introduced to Hill Hillcrest Company and they purchased six thousand one hundred dollars one hundred and eighty dollars of supplies on account. And they tell us in A, journalize the May twenty second transaction to the journal. Then we are going to, so we analyze the transaction, as you can see here. Then they want us to record it to the journal, post it to the ledger. And uh, then, well, here they, they don't want us, we don't have enough information to create the unadjusted trial balance, but we'll get to that shortly. So here is the transaction. We purchased supplies on account. We did not use cash. So the two accounts impacted here are supplies and accounts payable, which I abbreviate with AP. Supplies are increasing in my business and so is my debt. So supplies is, a, is an asset account and it increases on the debit side. Accounts payable is a liability account and it increases on the credit side. So now that we know that supplies is being debited based on its increase and accounts payable is being credited based on its increase, we record that in our journal. So we put in the date, we list the account that's being debited first, so that's supplies because it's being debited, and then we indent and list last accounts payable. So we put in the amount of the increase increases in the correct category, debit and credit. Now we want to take this information and store it to our ledger. So that's what we call posting. And so we go to the individual supply account and we put in the date. So that's the 22nd. It already had a value in there of $1,500. And so notice on this date's May 22nd, we are doing what to this account? We are debiting this account. So we place that debit in the debit column in the ledger. So now that's increasing this account. So it already had 1500 in it. So 1500 plus what I newly placed there is now making it $7,680. So that's its ending balance. So I'll just put that up here so that you know. That's its ending balance. That's how much value is stored in the supply account. Then we go to accounts payable in the ledger and we post or store that information here. Notice it's being credited. So we credit that account, 6,180. It already had value there. So we're adding to it because remember this account increases with a credit and so now the ending balance for this says I have twenty two thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars worth of value there All right. so let's take a look at some transaction terminology when you see something that says received cash for services provided, then the two accounts that are being impacted here is cash and services provided, which is our earnings based on fees earned or revenue. So remember, fees earned is just a formal name for revenue. 
All right, so cash, received cash is increasing. Revenue is increasing, but remember they increase on two different sides. Cash will increases on the debit side, revenue increases on the credit side. If you see a phrase like services provided on account, so services reflects revenue. On account reflects we didn't get paid, so that's accounts receivable. So revenue is always increasing. What I'm waiting to receive is increasing. So they're both increasing, but remember they increase on two different sides. Accounts receivable is an asset and increases on the debit side. Revenue, or the formal name for revenue, which is fees earned, is increasing, but it increases on the credit side. Received cash on account. Received cash on account. And so here we receive the cash on account. So those are two accounts there. Cash is increasing on account, which is accounts receivable, is decreasing. So these are the sides that they increase and decrease on. Purchased on account. So we have purchased something without using cash. So we are increasing our debt. So we purchased whatever that asset was and that is increasing and so is my debt. Remember they both increase on two different sides. Paid on account. So cash is decreasing and so is my debt because I'm paying it down. Well, they're both decreasing, but remember they decrease on two different sides. Paid cash. This is when two assets are impacted um, or in expense in regards to this type of activity. So we would definitely credit cash and the other account would be debited. In this case, whether it's an asset or an expense, either one they will be debited. Depending on if we're paying cash to pay a bill or paying cash to make a purchase. Issued capital stock. So the two accounts here are cash and uh, common stock. It really should be common stock because that's the word term we're using in this textbook. Common stock. Guess what, folks? They're both increasing in the business. Cash is increasing and so is the issuance of the common stock. But remember, they both increase on two different sides. And then we pay dividends. Cash is involved and dividends is involved. Cash is decreasing, whereas dividends are increasing. And so thus the debit and credit that follows.